Peace to the Lord, my brethren. I'd like to first to con congratulate Wayne because for the first time I go to a church and they clean up the microphone. <laughs> it's a sign that he takes care of the pastors. I'm not just hinting that I'm old and I'm afraid of COVID. I took all the doses of uh, the vaccine. But Ronildo and I, we're almost the same age. It's a matter of uh, it's a small difference. The one who is a little older than us is Kelly, right? But nobody needs to know. The other day, I found a man. We were having a conversation. My wife had a conversation with everyone. And she's 10 years older than, than I. She almost hit me. She's 10 years older than I. Then, no, then you go uh, on, to the front and give classes. Well, today I made a mention yesterday to a text of the word. And I'm going to say today, with greater details for this text in the letter to Hebrews 4. No, even. Yeah. Hebrews 4, 12. Hebrews 4, 12. The sword that goes uh, separate, um, a, a sword of two edges and can separate uh, between the diff separation between the soul and the spirit and but since i mentioned it uh, yesterday there is an, an experience in this text i don't know if you remember i i think i already shared with you in the past raise your hand if you remember you're worse than me you're more forgetful than i so let's go when the church began in 1968 one of the brethren from this original group had an experience when he was awakened in the early dawn the lord called him on an early dawn and he woke up and the lord told something to him and he always throughout the years always shared with us this experience that he had early dawn he didn't sleep he cried all day it was something very strong because, in, in fact, he was resisting a call from the Lord. And the Lord said to him that morning, in that early dawn, he said, I have a purpose, I have a work to be done. If you do not accept this call, I'm going to call someone else. But then I'm going to deal with you later. So then he felt the, the pressure. So then the years passed and all of this. We had a great battle. I don't know if you noticed in 2013, a great struggle, difficulties. The Lord said that he was going to speak in the proper time regarding all of this. And in May, I like, I like dates, you may not believe it. People in Presbytery says, regarding date, just ask Amadeo. A few dates, uh, they are landmarks for me. And this was a landmark for me in May 2015. Two years after of all of this that happened, this same brother, this pastor, he had a second experience that was similar to the first one. He was awakened on the early dawn. And the same voice that called him in 1968 called him in May of 2015. He was really spooked because he recognized that voice. It was awakened. It was awakened. And the Lord told him, uh, you have another mission now. You go. You go to speak to my people that I want. 
um, a perfecting in the understanding of my doctrine. Not that the doctrine is going to be created, but I want my people to understand in a deeper way my doctrine. And the text that I want is this, this of the word, Hebrew 4.12, this one. And he called us for a meeting, really meeting with the pastors. And it was Saturday, and he called us and said, <coughs> and said, I'd like to share with you an experience that I had on this early dawn. It was the same one that I had in the beginning of this church. And the one who spoke to me back then now spoke to me this. And the Lord wanted to renew, to bring the people to perfect their understanding of the doctrine, go deeper. And I don't know if you have noticed that since 2015 to now, the classes of the seminar, they have changed. I don't know if you noticed, there's a different dynamics, topics that are being renewed. They're completely different than what we used to bring until that point. And when the Lord gave this text, it is interesting that when he reads the text, those are things that, yeah, of course, the ones who preach the word has experiences like this. When he read the text, I understood the text clearly. Perfectly understood the text. But he didn't understand the text. He read. And then I said, I understood the text. <coughs> then he he played with me and said, he told me to say, oh, then you're going to teach this topic next seminar. So then we're going to speak about this verse, which is why. Pay attention. And this is very important for us to understand because we speak today about mystery and people are sometimes, oh, we keep preaching about mystery, mystery. It is something else the Lord has called our attention to. The gospel is a mystery. What I said to yesterday, the mystery of faith, faith, faith has a mystery because you can you believe in something that you can't see and it's something that is an experience that completely different completely different and this is and it moves us so when the lord gave the experience of the text i, I was reminded of another experience the lord has given about the experience of uh, that the pastor was coming up the ramp of the manning, he heard a loud noise and on the sky he saw eternal gospel. He was really spooked. So then we were talking about why the Lord is doing this and we always keep trying to understand why the Holy Spirit is still here. Why do the Holy Spirit acts in this way? Because we open up our hearts to listen to his voice. It is a reality. In spite of all our difficulties and our failures, we're not perfect, of course. But we need to, we want to hear the voice of God. And He speaks to us and corrects us sometimes. And sometimes in, in an even harsher way. But why this text? Why the Lord wanted awaken the church seven years ago, almost seven years ago, for this? Firstly, the Lord was calling us back to the Word. Because the Word, there were three moments of the Word. When the church begins the Word, the complement of the Word, which was the New Testament, was awaiting in the heart of the church, which was the biography of Jesus that were written in the four Gospels. The letters, doctrinary letters, they, what did they represent? The description of what was happening. The letter didn't come first and then the experience came, came later. No, Paul was used to teach what was happening. 
Paul describes in that detail and in a very clear way the Pentecost, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and spiritual gifts, and etc., etc. That's why it's so important and so interesting. The doctrinary letters, many people don't understand. They don't know they are being written before the Gospels. Did you know that? The doctrinary letters, they were written in the first century, in the, in the 53, 54, 55, the first letters, Galatians, then Romans. The Gospels were written from the year 80, the first of John, Mark, and then Matthew, then Luke, and then and the, and at almost at the end of the century. So the word had a mystery. And so when the church begins, what did the enemy do? He tried to destroy the word. He tried to destroy the word. The church begins. So then uh, all this, all uh, what happened to the church of Jerusalem, enemy went after the church of Jerusalem. He didn't go to, against the Gentiles. He went to Jerusalem where the apostles were, the ones who lived with Jesus. They went there trying to introduce the Mosaic laws and try to keep the Sabbath and the food, the type of type of food and all these things, all the Mosaic cult uh, service. And then uh, the problem with the Nicolaites, some believe that Nicholas, Nicholas was the one who had deviated and then they would kill the doctrine and they would destroy. And God did not allow it. God acted in an amazing way in the Council of, uh, Council of Jerusalem in chapter 15 of Acts when definitely the action of the enemy was defeated there in the Council of Jerusalem on chapter 15 of Acts. But the enemy was not satisfied and tried to kill the church so that the doctrine would would die with it. It was the massacre of the church and he was not able. The enemy not, then made a third attempt when he unites with the church through the paganism with the Roman Empire to destroy faith. And what happened? Truly, that happened. Christianity joined the Roman Empire. Constantine, through, through the first uh, rulings, he, he stops to persecute the Christians, the consul, and then to, to those who come and turns Christianity in, into the official religion of the Roman Empire, and the word is buried. It was necessary 1,500 years for Luther, actually 1,200 years for Luther to resurrect the word, the treasure that was hidden. So the word comes back. And then what happened with the word? When Luther brings up the word, what was restored? The true faith, because of course, the, the faith that existed at that point was a faith that was superstitious and mystic, mystic was a faith of the paganism. And what happens in our days is the same fact. The word now in our days, what happened with the word? The word was secularized, became uh, just a common word. People attacked the word like if nothing was happening. So now let's go back to the text. Why then the Lord called our attention to this text? Because the word without the operation of the Holy Spirit is dead. It's just a letter. It's, it's a story. It's just a tale. It's a poetry. It can be like a philosophical mention, uh, quote, but it is Poorly rational, and the world today lives in it. The human reason, man became such an imponent being in the control of science. A science is something amazing. I'm amazed with science. How interesting, right? I already spoke about it. Sometimes I come I'm on, and going to pick up the plane, and then I look there and I see a turbine of that size, and I think, wow, 
This thing is going to fly. It is going to fly. It is something that is hard. It doesn't flap the wings. It doesn't have a beak. How can this thing... And, and fast. How do they do this? How do they manufacture it? It is really impressive. One day I went to YouTube and uh, building a turbine. I had to turn off because I keep looking at it. Oh, I'm going to go crazy. Something crazy. Something out of this world. But God did this with man. He gave man this ability, incredible cap capability. You see then the satellite and TV. A plane, I even understand a little bit, but TV, I was never able to understand. Two wires that enter into the wall and then on the TV, and everybody's inside of your house. I never understood that, sincerely. I never understood. It's something really weird. It is really weird. So science is something very interesting. And man was so excited with it that he thinks he's greater than God. He thinks that he's superior, so then his knowledge is superior, and they forget that all the greatness of the creative work, God gave him the ability to participate. God gave him the ability to understand it, not to create it, but to discover its laws, right? The laws of physics, why that thing happens, right? This is all God's creation. But why is the Holy Spirit calling us attention to the, for the true church, the true church of the Word? Because He wants to show to us that the mystery is that is above all of this. If this Word is alive, the Word cannot be dead. So then the Lord says, "Bring my people to understand this." The Word is alive, and when is the Word alive? It's when the Holy Spirit operates. When the Holy Spirit operates, it becomes alive. Because one day, it came out of the mouth of the Lord. The Holy Spirit used man, inspired man, for the Word of God to, be, to come, so that we can only enter in it if the Holy Spirit operates in us, so that we are able to reach, so the Word is alive, and only then it is efficient. And why is the word efficient? We can speak about uh, the medicine. Do you like medicine? Today, medicine has evolved. Uh, pharmacology is something really amazing. I remember when it was my first year of medicine, and my my colleagues that were a, a little farther in uh, college, they warned us, the new ones, he, they said you need to dominate a few uh, subjects of the basics, like anatomy, physiology, pathology, and pharmacology. Those four topics we need to dominate. They would tell that to us. And pharmacology is something that is really interesting. You develop... Like, for example, the study of the antibiotics, how do the antibiotics work? Today, there are antibiotics, of, they are very advanced. Because sometimes certain germs and bacteria, for example, they become extremely resistant because they begin to leave the antibiotic and they gain resistance. So then it is necessary, different antibiotics with, that have a different... Uh, action and they can work in a different way against those organisms. So what is what do the doctors say? There is a uh, serious infection. The other day there was a brother here, the American doctor has a different way of acting like than us. He is a little more exaggerated. So the brother went there, did an operation, a simple operation was an appendicitis that you do with like a video, but, but then a, a, there was a leak into the cavity when they called and said, call the doctor, intervene in the cavity because if it is infected, 
bacteria from the intestine in the cavity. It is, is very resistant to several anti antibiotics. The risk of life is very serious. Uh, a leakage on the intestine, the, the death rate is very great. Why is that? Because this common antibiotic loses its efficacy. So it's not, has no efficacy against that bacteria, right? So when you say that it's, the word is a life and it has efficacy, because it's a word is not a life, it's not, there's no efficacy. So the word does not operate, it's, it does not act, does not heal or deliver. So the word, when it is alive, it operates. I always share an experience that is going to help you. I was a pastor of the church of Prada Costa for the church there. It was Castaneda and then Porto Dic, and they grew a lot. It went up to 530 members in Mobidic, and then uh, it split it to another church, church of the cost, uh, beat of the cost four. So the sister from Brazil and always uh, uh, teased them. I like the sister because they pray and the youth don't pray. So then two buses came from Brazil and they watched the seminar. They stayed in the manning. And then on Sunday they came down and they said, I'm going to the church of Pai da Costa Four. I'm going to see Amado in Pai da Costa Four. Oh, Amado, I'm going to watch your church. And I was all excited. <laughs> then I said, they're going to come here to see me. So then I'm going to have to deliver a message that would excite, right? I prepared a message that was very well prepared. Uh, that way, very pretty, because the sisters are there. Oh, there was a beautiful praise, the church sang, and I was there all comfortably sitting. Man, it's a difficult thing, and so it's something that happens you don't even notice. Vanity is something that is terrible. And I was a little excited with that. They came here to see me. <laughs> I prepared the message, very pretty, and I sat down and see what the Holy Spirit does. And that's what the Holy Spirit has called us our attention to it. So look at the experience that I had. And then said, so everything is all right. For now, when was one praise for the message, the pastor was next to me, told me, interesting, Amadou, say, I had a vision. And I thought, oh, oh it's going to be blessing, right? Tell, tell, share, my brother. Had you consult? No, you don't need to consult. Uh, I was all excited. And he said, look, I had a vision where you were at a high sea and you throw a, a net, a fishing net. When you pulled it back, you didn't catch anything. And then I said, and the lawyer has revealed that the message you prepared, and that's not the one. Then I said, then you're going to preach. <laughs> and he said to me, no, I only had the gift. Then I looked to one to a side and to the other, looked for another pastor. There was no one else, and the church was full, and the sisters were there, all like waiting. And uh, my Bible closed, and nothing. And I scratched my head, and I thought, "What am I going to do?" And I closed my Bible, and I thought, and the brother behind me said, "Pastor, this is the last song, Pastor." <laughs> And I was just angry and I said, oh, just shut your mouth. I almost said that. I was a little oppressed. You know, the message I prepared is so, that was so pretty a message that I prepared. Oh, that's good. But not crazy to go to the front and do something different. So then went to the front. Do you, do you know like a, a, a child that is... Uh, no, we raised, you know, so I I had a tender of, and then I I, I, tell, I told the Lord, Lord, I prepared a message. He told me that there was no, that was not the right message. So there is something here, the Bible is here, and I was speaking with the Lord. The church, church is singing at the end of the song. Now I'm going to plead for the blood of Jesus. I'm going to open the Bible, and whatever he opens, I'll preach about it. I'm going to put my finger on the Bible and the text that is 
beneath my finger, I'm going to open and preach, and whatever happens, happens. Then I pleaded, and then I opened the Bible. I opened the Bible, and I put my finger. When the song was over, I asked the church to stand up. Then a red was under my finger. And you, with joy, will take water from the fount of salvation. And the church began to cry. The church began to cry, cry, cry. You look to one side and to the other, and the church crying, crying, crying. There was something happening, and I, and there, and there was such a people, and I spoke about, about 10, 15 minutes, and the sister came and embraced me. Oh, brother, you are, you're great. And then I was thinking, the Lord didn't tell me anything, gave me no encouragement, but I learned one thing, that the word, that my word does not do God's work. The one that do God's, does God's work, it's His Word. I could have preached a beautiful Mass and everybody would have said, Oh, what a beautiful message, and nothing would happen. But then I deliver a message that comes from the Spirit, and everything happens. You know, you know why? Because the Word that the Holy Spirit prepares is, has, is, has efficacy. And then, so why? The Holy Spirit said, Read this text and relate this to my people. We say this. And encourage the church that church life and as efficacy penetrate the word penetrates sometimes the word acts on its own I already said uh, I already told this story three times a year I think what he said that my oldest sister she would have said oh daddy God of mercy I'm gonna bring it to the you may have a beginning of Alzheimer's, <laughs> but that's all right. I always say, but there is always one that never heard and needs to hear. Do this one that never heard. I was teaching about the Bible and on many. And when the class was over, a sister came to speak with me, to share with me an experience. Pastor, I want to share with you an experience. So, so then I said, okay, my sister. I think that the majority heard this, but I'm going to tell it again. Pastor, I was... I was Catholic, participated on a group, on a ch Catholic church, and my neighbor, she was, I had a friend that, I, that was from the church, and one day she gave me, as a gift, a Bible, and I picked up this Bible. It was different than the Bible that I had. So then I went and brought it to the father and asked, and showed the Bible, and he said, hey, this Bible is completely wrong. This Bible is a, it's a Protestant Bible. I said, then I asked him, what am I supposed to do? And he said, burn it. Set it on fire. Then I said, okay. So then she went home and called the son, picked up the Bible, filled with alcohol, and set it on fire, and burned the Bible, and then threw it to the garbage uh, can. She, they, it's like a, a dumpster there. A pastor in my, my street, there was a bar in front of my house. There was a bar. And there was a drunk there. And that drunk, they, he was there for months. All dirty, uh, long beard. And he would sleep and wake up on the sidewalk. He uh, uh, sleep uh, uh, covered on, on newspaper. That he would wake up drunk and would sleep drunk. And this individual one day came to my house and asked for food. He asked for lunch. And I said, I'm not going to give you food because you're thinking it's too much. Oh, boy. But he asked, oh, give me food. Then she said, okay, I'm going to give you food. Go there. Get, there was uh, a place that there is a garbage. There is a place where... People dump garbage, you know, put it on the bag, and bring to the front so that so then the garbage trunk truck will pick it up. So then after that, I'm going to give you lunch. And then he came back, and he brought the Bible all burned up. Hey, I found this in the middle of the garbage. 
I think it's a Bible. And she said, yeah, it's a Bible. And then put it inside of the garbage bag and throw it away. And then he said, oh, okay. And went there, did all of that. And she gave him lunch. And on the next day, the drone vanished. He vanished from the region. And everybody asked, did the drunk die or did he get sick or something? But he vanished. Many months later, she was going on the city, in the center of the city, and a young man, well dressed, and came close to her and I greeted her and, how are you doing? And she said, okay, do I know you? And he said, yeah, you don't remember me, but and she said, I don't remember you. Who are you? He looked at her, I am that drunk. He said, what? Yeah, I am that drunk that was on your street. And she said, what happened? And then he said, oh, well, I have a story to tell you. Remember when I cleaned up your backyard and picked up all that garbage and put it in bags so that the garbage trunk would take it out? I remember for you to give me lunch. Remember the Bible? I didn't throw it away. I picked it up, took it with me, and when I opened, the Lord spoke to me. And she looked at me and she said, what happened with that young man? And he said, now I'm a servant of God. Do you want to know my church? And I went to his church and that's why I'm here on the seminar, the woman said. And my brethren, when the Holy Spirit operates on the word, the life is life is and has efficacy. No, nothing everything is like that. I never forgot the experience of this sister of this of this individual of that experience. So why the Holy Spirit called our attention? Bring the people the Lord is alive and has efficacy, more penetrating the sword of two edges, go even to the division of the soul and the spirit and I preached about it and, and I asked, Lord, why soul and spirit and soul and spirit? And I was trying to understand why this and the Lord brought me to the understanding that when the word is written to the Hebrews, what dominated the culture of the time was the Greek culture or the Hellenistic culture where the Roman Empire, in spite of being a strong empire, warrior empire, but the culture that predominated was the Hellenistic culture, the, the culture of the Greek and Macedonian Empire, and the culture of the philosophy. And on the philosophy, the Greeks said that they, there is a difference between soul and spirit. And they believe that the soul is man's side and what is human. And the spirit is what comes from God. So he thought, he thought that the heart, and they even called like the, the karja and the PCK was, was the soul that died with man. And the spirit was what was from God. That he would separate this. So when he writes the letter, then he's saying the fallen. The living word separate reason from the spiritual. And that's reality. When the word is a living word, it discerns this, it does this, makes the separation between reason and revelation. And that's why we, when you open the word, it speaks to us. And when does the word speak to us? When is the life? When, when is the word of life? He was dressed with garments and sprinkled with blood, and the name by which he is called is the word. So when the whole blood operates and the spirit operates, the word is alive. So it discerns, it separates this. So it says the following. The word is opportunity division between bone marrow, the joints and bone marrow. Why joints? We don't call the joints. In medicine, we don't call joints. We call the articulation, uh, articulations. I was speaking with a friend, her and I, 
I'm older than her. It could not have been like this. Everything hurts, you know. The articulation, the the backbone, the knee. Do you have this? Articulations. My brain. <laughs> the joints. It, it's the connection between the bones. This is what gives the sus sustain support for the the skeleton, the body. It's sustained by this. So when he writes this, it shows the need of the health of the body to do God's work. He's prophesying about the church as a body of Christ. The church is prepared for this together, right? So it says the following. The, the joints and the bone marrow, the bone marrow, bone marrow, bone marrow. And our bone, there's the two type of bone, uh, the yellow bone marrow and the red bone marrow, which is the producer of the bl red blood cells and also and removes part of the blood that it considers old. So on the the last cells that are removed are the MS, the one that lasts the longer. The whole blood is renewed in the most three months. So in every three months you have new blood. When we have problems like, for example, why do you have problems sometimes on the chemotherapy? Because the chemotherapy, it it does a stoppage on the multiplication of the blood so the, the tumor stops growing. What does chemotherapy do? It interrupts the growth of the, the tumor. It causes the immunological system to destroy whatever it is there. The tumor that is existing begin to be fought against by the immunological system while the tumor has been stopped by the chemistry, the chemical substance that interferes the blood multiplication. I'm not going to enter the details here today. There are things that are really amazing regarding this topic. I'm not going to enter into details because I'm not very knowledgeable about it. But the blood is renewed every three months. But why then, they said, the joints and bone marrows, why is, do you know that? Do you know what it is, my brethren? Because the blood in the Bible, in the, the entire Bible, people criticize my brother, because we talk too much about blood. Blood, this, blood, that. The blood, this is too mystic. Well, I'm scared about blood. I don't even want to talk about blood. So now let's go. The Old Testament, they said, God had things like completely uh, random. God does things that are random. The thing that God does things random in a uh, reckless way, so then God called Moses and he said, you're going to do this. When God spoke to Moses, you call Aram, his student, you're going to put the lamp over the table on the act of consecration of the priest. Put the lamp there and they will Hold, hold the head of the lamb, the animal will be sacrificed, and you, the blood you're going to put. God speaking to Moses, for Moses to speak with Aaron, the blood is going to be put on the right ear, the, the right thumb, and the right uh, uh, toe, uh, big toe. And why the Lord asks to put blood on uh, the the ear, right ear, right thumb, and right toe. Did he want to show something different? Of course he wanted. You know, something is done in an aleatory. God is speaking. We need to hear the voice of the Spirit. The hand, when he, he needs to, the hand, he needed to do the work and the walk because the, the, the big toe is the one that uh, adjust the, the step. The one that gives the base for for stepping is the big toe. The ones who lose the big toe, he limps. So the blood is the Old Testament. The whole Old Testament, the New Testament is prophetic. So the word, so the blood is typifies operational spirit because it's life. It's life. So it's a type of the Holy Spirit. So when he speaks, the word is life is as efficacy in the word, the life, it renews the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. So every time, that, that's why the word, 
is fed by the living word. That's why every time that it comes, it comes and renews, and there is an operation of the Holy Spirit in your life every more and more. So the word needs to be that you have life because that's what it does. So the Lord called us in a very profound way and brings the people to this. We then began from 2015 to work more on this. Sometimes we are a little more persistent. Sometimes so the Jesus goes there because the experience was his. Sometimes, well, sometimes yeah, a little more incisive. And people are a little, but the situation with him was not easy. It was different. I didn't want to have the experience that he had, and or to be on his place. But the the Lord does the same with all of us. Each one of us has a different experience. My wife, she criticized me a lot. He says that it needs to be more Pentecostal. You too. Of course, I was uh, I helped uh, a father when the Catholic Church. I was prepared my to my fir my family to be a, a Catholic priest. When I was on my youth, I went astray from this path because I told my aunt that I wanted to get married. <laughs> it was something that was a great disappointment for my grandfather because he, he was very Catholic. And she was not. She was always traditional. She went, was born in a traditional church. And when she, but she said, uh, oh, he tells that she's Pentecost. She likes his hallelujah out of time that I don't like. But that's all right. I don't want to say that is a sin. <laughs> but the experience that is important for us, what brought us to this place, is this one of bringing to the church to understand this, the word, why Christianity is in crisis. Why is Christianity in crisis? Because it went astray from, from the Word, secularized the Word. And with this, the faith was destroyed. Their faith became uh, rational, academic, philosophic. This faith will lead nowhere. That's why we have the letter to Hebrews. The word is alive and has efficacy. More penetrating the sword of two edges, it goes all the way to the division between soul and spirit and the, the joints and bone marrow and ready to discern the thoughts. Yes, open the word in the spirit and you see. Ask a question of the, to the Lord in, in the Holy Spirit and sometimes when it began to attend, I already said this, I began to attend, I was, starving, I was doing um, medicine school and uh, this young man I was from the church, I was not, but I began to go and all that, I had my own religion, I was 19 years old, I had gone out of a relationship. I was completely in love with the girl, this, you know, but there was a disappointment, and I began to go there and begin to live there in the house, and I got interested in this sister, the sister of my friend. She was inviting me to go to the church. I never accepted any invitation, never accepted. But then one day, she was 19, and she was 16, 16, 17 years old. And then one day, she noticed that I was interested in her. And she opened up to me and she said, you interested in me? And I said, yeah, yeah. You know how life is. <laughs> you know. And she said, open the word regarding you. And, and, and then I asked, what? And she said, open the word regarding you. And I didn't even understand what she was talking about. Open the word, open the word. What word? What word? The Bible. Why, why do you open the Bible regarding me? And she said, yeah, you open the Bible. What, what does that mean? 
they opened the word regarding you and the text the Lord gave me was do not enter into Egypt and then I said what <laughs> do not enter into Egypt what does that have to do with me Egypt that I know is a country in the east uh, is that the Bible when you speak about Egypt it typifies the world and has the world to do uh, you're in you're on the moon we are here what is that and uh, the conversation ended there she opened the word and regarding me and then she said do not enter into Egypt can you imagine how difficult it was but I was and that bothered me so that this is for another message <laughs> when I got into this but then I had an experience that I had and went to college so I began to attend the church and I, I feel what experience the spiritual gift but the, but the youth there was no one I didn't feel like I was dating anyone, but a few months later, I began to have a conversation and consulted. And then uh, it was the promised land now. <laughs> How the word changed, huh? So that's the story. So now, see. The experience the Lord gave us, calling us for this. So all this experience that we had, coming to here was in the sense that the church needs to be brought to understand this what the Lord wants for this moment amen is that everything all right so now, now let's are we connected with anyone no let's let's sing a couple of songs what did we sing yesterday and an, an opening and closing of an eye so let's sing that one again. <laughs> so then we finish standing up. to be or we praise your name for our presence in this place your name is say the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus the love of God our eternal father the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be with you now and forevermore amen the church may be seated anything else pastor tomorrow right going to the seminar oh there are people that are going to be sleeping there right Oh, there is an opening there.